afternoon. Uh, welcome you. We are going to continue our work today. We are going to talk about the topic, uh, finally free, re hostage in the Russian Federation, 368 days of Yuri Yatsenko in the Russian dungeons. We are going um, to listen to Yuri Yatsenko, student released from prison. If it will be uh, possible, technically, we are going to hear Gordzaikin, lawyer Yuri Yatsenko, and Maria Atomic, journalist of the Center for Civil Liberties, Yuri Maidan, source volunteer. Good afternoon. My name is Yuri Yatsenko. I'm a student of Lviv National University named after Ivan Franco. Last year, I went to Russia since I was busy or was dealing with, well, I bought uh, cheap commodities in Russia and resold those, used to resell them in Ukraine and vice versa. As a rule, the goods were associated with the, um, let's say, the home uh, home utilities and <clears throat> actually I filled out the immigration uh, form and went to Russia you know, for business purposes. Then I took the room in one of the Russian hotel in the next morning. And the uh, employees of the criminal um, investigation unit of Russian Federation came to my room and said that they had to verify my documents and papers. Since this statement of their part was rather strange and said, did I violate anything? He said, they said no, this kind of formal verification or check before man may deny us. Myself and my friend we were taken to the um, police precinct you know, and they actually um, they used all the uh, criminal databases to check our information. They took fingerprints of ours and um, had an interview with us uh, asking what are the reasons for our stay in the Russian Federation. Um, when they did not reveal any kind of violations uh, of ours, for some reason the RSB representative from uh, the uh, Russian Federation Security Service came and started to threaten us in uh, trying to recruit us and to, uh, to, to make us cooperate with them to appear in the air with some kind of um, the, uh, the declarations to detrimental to Ukraine. And those talks uh, lasted for about one hour. For the three next days, they, we were deprived of the possibility to contact uh, you know, uh, no, uh, no, neither lawyer nor our relatives. Nobody knew where we were. There was kind of psychological and physical violence. We were battered and beaten. I was threatened to, that they were going to inject some chemical uh, substances unknown to me. And all that was done in order to force us to cooperate with the special services of the Russian Federation. To any of their proposals, uh, we had one uh, reply or an answer, rejection of their proposal. Then the immigration service representative came who said uh, that we are subject to deportation because we are unofficially uh, across the Russian border. But the truth is that he um, uh, lodged the, the application in the court um, that he wrongly uh, declared our for purpose of our stay in the Russian Federation. It was a kind of private visit, as we mentioned that. According to the rule in the court, they ruled that uh, we had some terrorist in, 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 uh, intentions. How we can actually separate the private and tourist uh, purpose of our visit, nobody could prove it or whatever else, and this is, remains um, unknown to me up till now. So maybe the private reason of visit can contain also some signs of, of tourist purpose of our visit. So this is a kind of absolutely ungrounded uh, reason. Uh, we were taken to the uh, special special um, uh, facility for foreign citizens and repeatedly the employees of SB came to us to in interrogate us. May 22, one of the um, uh, officers of SB took beyond the boundaries of the special facility for foreign citizens and as soon as I left that territory and I was handcuffed and that by that time I saw two special and uh, special designation troops, uh, people who took me to the administration director of FSB 
and he again tried to recruit me and to force me to cooperate. I again refused and then took me to the forced area and they started to torture me. You have to understand that there was a bag on my hand. I was handcuffed my hands behind my uh, back and the torches were as, as a pose. I was hang, uh, hung um, by the hands and they kicked and hit me in the, uh, in the scrotum. And uh, usually they, they, they uh, targeted the kicks and blows in the abdomen and the scrotum, kidneys and liver, and they hit me uh, with backfield with sand on my head. They put, put a gun into my hand and they threatened to, uh, to shoot me and, uh, point blank. I was saved because they had to be taken to the special facility by 10 o'clock where they have a kind of video recording of where the, the foreign citizens stay. I understood that I would not be able to uh, survive another day of this kind of torture because um, the, 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 the probability that I will survive was, very, was minimum. That was, as I understood, that there was the highest, the top echelon um, officers of OSB. Uh, they ordered to force me uh, cooperate with them in order to avoid uh, any further tortures of this kind. I decided to uh, to cut my uh, veins on the uh, hands and uh, and cut my abdomen. I, had, I lost a lot of blood and I almost uh, fainted. And I declared to those people who came to take me from my cell, I said, if I'm not given the, the, the chance to call my relatives, I won't allow them to uh, stitch me, I mean, stitch my wounds. And they actually uh, agreed to my conditions because they saw what could happen. After that, uh, the journals actually raised the hell of balloon. The scandal the general consular of Ukraine came to this facility who actually exercised control over the situation. I expected further visits of the FSB employees to my cell in the prison. And uh, every time when the door of my cell were, was open, I took the blade uh, and uh, threatened to cut my arteries. And uh, that's why they tried uh, uh, not to disturb me any longer. Three months later, after my stay in the special facility, uh, the, uh, the talks about the uh, possible cooperation continued, and the FSB officers so somehow had to justify some illegal reasons for our long um, detention. They, they decided to launch a criminal case against me, criminal suit, and they, this case was very uh, strange. Please, uh, I would like to draw attention to the fact that after three months of my detention based on administrative case, there suddenly some kind of witness appears who said that m more than one year ago I left uh, at his place some things for him to keep it and uh, some kind of the prohibited things appear all of a sudden. Uh, and this is style of the 1930s when based on some kind of the testimonies of one unknown witnesses, they, they used the same approach and uh, uh, actually charged me with this kind of um, the illegal activities. And during the court, the same witness clearly mentioned that he has never seen me before. This is the first time, this was the first time that he saw me, which actually proved that this was a kind of absolutely forced case. After half a year, after I was staying there half a year in the facility for uh, foreign um, citizens, they were, took me to the Kursk uh, region detention center, uh, pre-trial, and I was uh, really was met a uh, very hot manner because uh, so to say, because they told the local detainees that I am a very dangerous saboteur and they are spy, and that's uh, hence the attitude to me. And when they were taking me to the cell, we are, we are uh, taking the uh, Bandera men and the terrorists who actually, and this is a quote, who threw the uh, phosphorus bomb uh, in, into the mob of children and women. So can you please understand, the people were very aggressively 
a, a, aggressively uh, uh, had aggressive attitude towards me because of this kind of d disinformation prepared by the federal federal and security service. One month later, I was taken to another detention center in the Belgrade city. This facility, in this facility, they tried to uh, break me down using different, uh, let's say, approaches, psychological pressure. For, for example, for the first three months, I, uh, I was put into the uh, one-man cell. On the one hand, this is a legal action. On the other hand, and this actually um, undermines the psychological forces of any person. Absolute isolation from the outside world, no telephone communication, only uh, the, cam the cell and the whatever else. And the, every day you can expect that the FSB officers will take you out of this uh, uh, cell and try to torture you again. And the way they torture you, you believe me, you can say anything they demand you to say. The, this is some of the episodes of uh, the attitude towards me. Uh, during the general meeting of the prisoners in this detention center, the deputy head of the Federal uh, Service of uh, the uh, Execution Punishment, he was he uh, visited my cell with all the king's men, so to say, the representatives of the f director of Federal Services of the Punishment execution, a very, a very significant and um, uh, delegation. And this deputy uh, had told me, well, I'm going, uh, going to use the, uh, the dirty words, so it's more or less quotation. You, Benderites, Bender have to be, now that I'm looking, uh, searching for the word, uh, you, Benderites, must be killed and the Kadir will come here, and and uh, he'll do Allah Akbar to all, all of you. And then he, uh, then he uh, asked the Muslims who were shared the cell with me, "Do you know what Allah Akbar means?" And they said, "Yes, we do." So all you will have to face Allah Akbar. And then he directly mentioned then uh, to the uh, to the head of the uh, detention center, those present there, that I give the permission to use the physical force in relation to this Bandera man. Uh, I was so much shocked by uh, the uh, by those, let's say, quotations by the colorful language, because that was the second in rank person in uh, the whole Belgrade region who gave the direct instruction to the local uh, management uh, to use the physical force, uh, to apply physical force to, to me. In this manner, I was, I was living for the last 12 months. I would like to emphasize that today in Russia, uh, a lot of people, of Ukrainian prisoners, share the same awful conditions uh, in Russia. And among those, about at least 10 we know the Ukrainians. A lot of unknown persons remain, remain to be unknown who do not have any chance to contact the mass media or the public organization. Those 10 political prisoners, as a rule, um, based on the absolutely invented reasons, are kept in the um, detention centers of Russia, and they are deprived of any kind of qualified defense. Um, let's say high school defense. How can we fight this kind of system in Russian Federation? Only in one way, which I understood from the very first days of my uh, detention. Only international pressure, only support on the part of the international community, only, uh, let's say, carrying the news about such things in, by the international mass media, because believe me, uh, security services very much afraid when uh, the, those cases become a kind of the high profile cases and be, be, become uh, known to the international community. They try to familiarize myself with every article associated with my case and ask me to comment on any of the articles. They have special trained people who monitor all the mass media related to any kind of the issue. They actually monitor how the public support is provided to political uh, prisoners. Please, I ask you kindly, those, those who can help the political prisoners, and uh, if you are talking about the Ukrainian citizens, we are 40 million strong. 
and there are millions upon millions of foreign citizens who can help our political prisoners and they their, their number is not that big, I mean, the prisoners. So please get involved in the liberation of political prisoners. I'm, stay, I'm here, standing here before you only owing to the, some kind of miracle, only owing to the support on the part of the dozens of people. I actually, I was expecting at least five year sentence of five year imprisonment because for the first article the smuggler of the explosives actually could uh, be associated with seven years of imprisonment the realistic day is threatened me with five years of imprisonment and now i'm standing here after nine months since the date of starting this kind of investigation i'm here only because i was supported by the ministry of foreign affairs of ukraine uh the, the general consular Gennady Breskalenko, Man managed to come several uh, days after they applied the very, uh, were, 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 were severe tortures against me, and they took this uh, case uh, under his personal control, and owing to the fact that the mass media was monitoring this kind of case, and the international community tried to do something, only uh, owing to that. And again, the, this kind of support can save our political, Ukraine political uh, prisoners. Very important is the um, the, 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 the skilled um, uh, the legal support. I had a lawyer who was my defense uh, attorney for this case. I know that my previous lawyer uh, was subjected to the pressure and they forced him to cooperate with the Federal Security Service of Russia. I have grounds to think that, uh, to say that because the Federal Security Service um, actually knew only the information which is shared with that lawyer. So please provide the uh, skilled or uh, high skilled, um, uh, let's say, uh, support to the political prisoners. Your questions now. We'll listen to Maria Tomak and then we'll uh, switch to questions. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. I will not take a lot of your time. You have a lot of questions to Yuri. I would like to say only uh, a couple of things. First, Yuri was arrested. If you look at this his case on the wave, how they started to make uh, terrorists from all Ukrainians. The first uh, part of the previous uh, uh, May, since some coach and coach were arrested in uh, Crimea, that was uh, promoted as an uh, infiltrated terrorist, and uh, the same with these uh, boys. So they were arrested and they were trying to, to make terrorists of them. And uh, I think we can agree with both of them, especially Yuri, who was there for long in the Russian Federation. The uh, victims of this uh, uh, war, propaganda war, first of all, war warfare. Because uh, from dialogues, uh, he told you it's clear that uh, Russian uh, law enforcement was um, they uh, tuned against the uh, right sector Maidan and all those um, myths about Bandera, etc. And all of that, uh, they uh, went out in uh, physical and moral tortures and uh, they will look uh, to prove that they are necessary. And we are catching, for example, uh, infiltrators and ter terrorists, and that's why these boys became victims of this um, information warfare, or pro propaganda warfare of Kremlin. And I would like to draw your attention. I, I thank Yuri that he agreed to participate in our uh, campaign, let my people go, and uh, it means that we don't demand all people who are kept uh, because of political reasons. I mean, uh, Ukraine is the Russian Federation, but not only. For example, Belarus Kirill Silvonchik from Belarus, who was uh, for two years under the same uh, sentence, uh, two years of uh, for a repost in Facebook, and uh, that was against uh, Russian aggression and uh, against Russian aggression in Ukraine. The, those people so, uh, deserve our support, as uh, many Russians. We have a few of them, people with conscience, and uh, who come with uh, single pickets against uh, war, the war and they get into jail. So these uh, people uh, deserve to be supported. And also I have to say that one of the uh, one of our NGO committee of civic uh, uh, support, uh, law advocacy group uh, of uh, Svetlana Galanushkina and the advocacy advocate, uh, they helped uh, of Russia, they helped Yuri, they are um, on the list of uh, foreign agents. 
in Russia, but uh, they helped and they will appreciate that. Here you see our infographics of uh, our political presidents, uh, presidents, we have it in English, and also we hold uh, an inf international campaign, we inform uh, Europe Parliament uh, in different institutions of European Union uh, by all techniques uh, uh, to liberate in addition uh, to Savchenko, Sintsov, Kolchenko, who are more or less uh, known, for the rest of to be uh, released. Maybe they don't have such a bright stories, but it does mean that uh, without re uh, any reason the Russian can do that and the FSB can torture them. Well, uh, FSB is uh, present everywhere in all of these cases. And, and then I would like to show the video which will launch um, as a part of an international campaign. And Yuri, Yuri agreed uh, to participate in this uh, video. If we can, we will show. And I would like to thank uh, just volunteers who helped us uh, to to make this uh, video. I am from Western Ukraine. I am a student of Lviv National Uni University. Also, I am Euromaidan activist. Last year, Russian FSB arrested me without any reasons, just for my Lviv registration. They beat me. They used a lot of physical and psychological violence. They forced me to refuse from my homeland, from my citizenship. They forced me to give false testimony. Something similar is happened with another Ukrainians in Russian Federation in their prisons. They need your support. Now I am free, and I demand freedom for others. Putin, let my people go. Thank you very much. Now on Skype uh, we will have a lawyer of uh, Yuri Yatsenko and uh, Petro Zeykan. Okay, we can start uh, on questions and uh, answers and questions third uh, part. Uh, we have uh, the lawyer on, on Skype, we will uh, connect with him. Please. Europa Bank, on 12. Tell about us, about your liberation. How did it happen? Also, I know they arrested Budan Yerichevsky. What's, uh, what's, what do you know about him? As to liberation, the moment of liberation. According to the law, they could keep me for more two weeks after official, uh, officially sought my term in the institution for foreigners and a uh, day on liberation. Uh, a representative of Federal Immigration Service uh, told uh, that uh, that uh, they would give us uh, me 800 rubles for the road and uh, I will be free out of CISO. Uh, nobody is going uh, to take me and nobody uh, was going uh, to drop me anywhere. I was concerned with that because I expected uh, that they, in such a case, I thought that FSB would uh, pick me up and also they do some uh, prophylaxis to me. So I was thinking how to defend myself. I was planning to stand uh, uh, under video cameras of uh, CISO until I called my parents. It's interesting. During the liberation, before, an hour before, they sign um, a document on liberation and, um, by the chief of the CISO. When I came to his office, he told me, Yatsenko, do you know that Yatsenyuk, of of, who has the same second name, 
gave you an order of uh, hero of Ukraine yesterday, I ordered you, and I, uh, I asked him for what? That because you are the best uh, spy in the Russian Federation from Ukraine. So, the administration of CISO was convinced until the end that I was a spy, and I was there not uh, for photograms of uh, powder in the Russian Federation, as to Bogdan. I cannot I'm not convinced in motivation of uh, FSB because a lot was not logic, not uh, predictable. A decision, decisions were taken at the last moment very often. They could uh, let me go much sooner. So a decision, this was uh, taken through consultations between chiefs of departments of FSB and some Moscow chief uh, of, of uh, general general office of FSB. As to Bogdan, I think, why he was uh, let go free sooner, because there was a big uh, civic pressure from our activists and uh, FSB decided in that way to compromise and uh, to let uh, one of us go. <laughs> the other point, FSB, because of unknown sources, uh, I received my picture from Euromaidan and uh, they didn't have such pictures about Bogdan and uh, they planned to use those uh, pictures uh, in order to fake my uh, criminal case. But I would like to underline there were a lot all, all bad words towards Bogdan. No, there were no cooperation with FSB. He was um, Strong during those three months when he was there together with me in uh, federal uh, migration service, and uh, also they applied uh, pressure on him and uh, tortures. They were forcing him uh, to uh, confess lie and uh, to allege me, and uh, they also uh, were convincing me to allege him. And now we'll make a little break because we have um, your lawyer on uh, Skype. Hello. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, Peter. Good afternoon. Uh, Ukrainian Crisis Media Center welcomes you. Now we have a briefing regarding the liberation of Yuri Yatsenko. And we'd be happy to hear some comments from you. Uh, what questions you have? Maybe you have some kind of statement. Well, in general, general, I can say that, of course, I was happy that he was liberated, but also I, I accounted on some results from the, uh, let's say, uh, that they will stop the criminal uh, prosecution of Yuri. On what grounds? Number one, um, you know, his charges, the absence of the guilt on the part of Yuri is per se, what they tried to charge him with. And I believe that in this case, we have absolutely wrong assessment of the situation regarding the legal assessment as regards Yuri. He doesn't have anything to do with the, some illegal actions on the territory of the Russian Federation, any kind of the, um, the activity. And then number two, which is absolutely obvious fact, one of the uh, files of this criminal case uh, allegedly, the actions which committed Yuri in under the law of the Russian Federation, the, the, those actions are not regarded as the violation of law or crimes under the criminal uh, code of Russian Federation because the storage of the hunting uh, gunpowder or whatever is not 
is, has been decriminalized, so it's not considered to be crime any longer. And the gunpowder, which allegedly was taken from him, or seized from him, which yeah, we, we actually create a joke on this uh, part. But even this is not the subject of um, uh, law violation, which entails some kind of criminal responsibility under the Russian legislation. In this case, the criminal law shouldn't be uh, actually launched. But anyway, you, they started this kind of the suit. It had to be stopped. And the criminal proceedings against Yuri had to be uh, eliminated and had to be rehabilitated according, uh, under the Russian law. So um, they stopped the criminal uh, prosecution. I'm st still insisting on that, despite the fact that Yuri has been liberated. I'm going to bring this case to the situation when uh, they will rehabilitate Yuri because life is long, quite long, and I believe that the further on, uh, the situation will uh, change for the better, but uh, to, I don't want my um, defendant to have such a uh, uh, spot in his biography as the uh, record, the criminal record, something like that, so, uh, which could tell a negative on his career, you know, promotion, his business, etc., etc. They didn't have any right to bring him to the criminal responsibility. Thanks a lot, Peter. Maybe the journals would have any questions to the uh, lawyer, uh, to the Yuri's uh, lawyer, please. You have the question, right? Uh, good afternoon. TV 112 journals, Igor Babak. What could you advise to other political prisoners? How can they can defend themselves in the legal field, the legal framework? I mean, so while, while being detained, first of all, they have to to timely apply for defense. The uh, the earlier the defender steps in, uh, defendant the uh, turn steps in, the more the more we have um, the chances to win. And again, again uh, uh, some information where I shall have some different, uh, defense attorneys step in at the stage when the persons detained already give some of testimonies, sometimes even through the violation of law. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. So the defense attorney who timely steps in can actually curb or stop this kind of violation against his defendant. Uh, and in this way, actually, to prevent the, uh, the unlawful actions. The earlier the defendant's attorney starts his work, the better. Thank you. Next question. So do not, please do not forget to introduce yourself. TV channel, uh, Zarya. Again, in the, speaking about the Russian um, society, the, defend, the lawyers of the so-called Ukrainian and the rights, have you uh, came across some kind of discomfort on the part of the Russian society? It's very difficult to talk about some kind of claims um, against the lawyers. Uh, uh, they know, know only too, too well that I'm former officer of the Russian army. I participated in some um, uh, fightings in the hotbed, so to say, and nobody can accuse me uh, that I'm not a patriot of uh, Russia, I'm a patriot of my country, but I just believe that violation of law, it is very much detrimental to the image of the country. And I'm fighting not the system, I'm fighting with the violation of the uh, rights of specific human being. I, I, I don't care whose rights I'm defending, the gangster, or let's say, or the let's say the law enforcement officer. This is my defendant, and I, I don't care who violated those rights. The gangster, the policeman officer, or FSB officer, whoever else. Thank you. Any other questions to Piotr? Good afternoon, Stas Kazluk, Ukrainian Week uh, publication. You mentioned that the first uh, lawyer, as far as I could understand, the FSB officers offered to cooperate with them, and he agreed. The special services, did they uh, actually offer you to cooperate with them and to help them to reach the positive for, for them uh, outcome of this case? Well, actually, they did not come up, uh, come to me with such proposals, and that, that would win-win because 
I have very long time uh, service record of the, let's say, of the operative um, uh, officer. Uh, actually, I served in the um, law enforcement uh, um, agencies for a long time, but that's why I don't think anybody would come up with the idea to approach a person who, with the majority, um, the major period of his life, was dealing with such issues. Next question. If there are no more questions or um, uh, specifications, thank you very much, Piotr. And we are going to continue uh, the uh, briefing with Marie and Yuri. Thank you. Okay, thank you and uh, goodbye. Any questions to Yuri or Maria, please shoot and do not forget to introduce yourselves. Tell me please, what are your plans for the future? Are you going to fight in the ATO? So, uh, army very much. If uh, the leadership of the country says that I should go, I will. But for the future, I need to uh, stand with my master's degree. As I'm a student at law department and I have to pass a state exam. Then I am going to uh, enter the graduate school. How? Did you survive? There's three months in alone in a, in in the cell. The first month they didn't uh, they didn't give me books. If you have literature, you can you can feel life uh, through by books. Um, so the first month they didn't give me books even. That's why I was uh, trying to use uh, different uh, techniques. And I was uh, praying a lot, and uh, also it was, I was uh, talking to myself, and uh, I was asked, I asked the questions, and uh, I was still trying to answer them uh, for long, and also I uh, make notes, and I um, took notes uh, in my um, diaries, and I thought about different political issues. Thank you. Any question? Because Russia will be with the neighbor with Russia for, for many years and uh, forever. Share your experience, experience. Probably you are not in, in the last in this in this case. Give advice. What is the best behavior under such a situation? And uh, is it that makes sense to go to uh, Russia these days? As to experience, in any case, if uh, you get under such conditions, um, uh, don't give official comments, don't sign anything without a lawyer, and uh, get the lawyer, first of all. Hire an, a professional lawyer in any way you can. Relatives, friends, uh, angels uh, should find uh, how to hire a professional lawyer. I was lucky. I have... Uh, a I'm a law student, so I knew what they would use, and uh, I knew what uh, kind of psychological tricks they would use. I expected that that there would be in my cell, uh, there would be agents, and uh, so they spent all the time together with me in the same cell. And uh, you have to be very careful, don't uh, don't be led by provocations, they will provoke you a lot. They will I, um, put with you, especially, uh, especially uh, people who would uh, provoke you to the next crime. It's very important to to be positive. Um, in no case, uh, don't get into a depression. As soon as you get into a depression, uh, you, they can break you. Uh, during the fir first month, I saw a lot of such cases among other prisoners. So find, uh, first of all, find a professional lawyer. Secondly, don't sign anything without the lawyer, without, without the professional lawyer. It's better to think many times.
You see, when when they arrested me, I had no. But yes, Savchenko is there, is, is there, but they, they, they arrested uh, after me. And information uh, about how she is kept there, I don't have that information. So, but uh, conditions in Sizosa are the same. Um, special, uh, special block in Sizosa, special unit. I was in Belgorod, and the special unit is the place where they keep the most dangerous uh, criminals. So there are only 10 cells in a special unit, including people who um, are lifers. They are in, uh, also those uh, who break abuse discipline. Also, there are some limitations. Uh, limitation on for using literature to get to get um, something from others so administration of CISO is uh, tougher to those who are in a special unit in Kursk I was in a regular cell it was so destroyed that it was uh, difficult, different at all. It took us uh, a week to clean it, and we were not able to clean it. So I can describe a lot of horrors. Rats like cats in corridors. rotten uh, floor, no medical support, and uh, I had my skin was itching. I was I sent up to see a doctor in Kursk for, for three weeks. And um, in three weeks, she decide, decided that I don't have uh, that uh, And uh, it's very easy. It took me. It's a uh, scab, and uh, so you contaminate people uh, who uh, you feel Asian, and you can contaminate other people. Concrete stories. How or provocations? How how did they pro provoke you? For example, as a rule, concrete. Uh, I have a few uh, concrete cases because I stopped uh, uh, the conversations about cooperation right away. If I was interested, what I should say and the nuances uh, from my side, it would look as. Uh, a, a possible cooperation and uh, they would press more in that direction. So I stopped any conversation about uh, cooperation right away. But from what I remember, I had uh, to speak on TV and to say that uh, uh, to say that Nalovich and Koyarosh from Red Sector sent me to Russia. So such names, you, you can remember, you remember such names <laughs> it would be funny if somebody would be inclined from Ukraine to say such evidence so and uh, if they say that means uh, that all the violence were used uh, how did you uh, treat your scab in CISO uh, first of all I I got it in, in a special institution for foreigners, and a lot of foreigners had that uh, disease. Uh, the administration was silent, silent in such moments because in 15 days, uh, foreigners were kicked out uh, to the country, and uh, nobody was uh, planning to treat them because treatment is specific. You need uh, people who 
you have to isolate the people uh, from healthy people and you have to use a special cream for some time. Uh, the diagnose it took them uh, two months uh, to, 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 to take it. I will complain seven daily complaints. They responded uh, that I have itching because uh, of my nerves, so because of uh, bad um, wash power powder. Uh, so the diagnose uh, was made more than a, later, a month after I started uh, to I picked up the disease. And um, they started uh, right after the, they started to, to treat me, and they started a criminal case against me. And uh, then they brought me to Kursk, and the, the doctor there decided that uh, and uh, that I'm, I, I, was, I was healthy. And uh, then in a month and a half in Belgorod uh, prison, in three weeks they started uh, to treat me, and I became fine. What was the most horrible during these uh, six, uh, twelve months? Physical tortures. You have to be careful with a six physical torture because a Spetsnaz FSB can uh, force anyone to give evidence they want. When they beat you professionally for half of a day, the last thing you are thinking about is you, you don't believe that you can get out. So try to call for assistance, yell, get support uh, of, uh, of people around, of our environment, as m much as possible. I, there could be a special lecture about that. I will not be able to give a short answer for this. Thank you. Any other question? Thank you. One, two questions and we are done. How did you manage how to get a razor? In CISO and in special institution for that's allowed. And they gave you six six per month according to the rules of uh, internal rules. A razor is very easy to to get it out and I warn people don't don't do this. Because you can, you can, you can uh, contaminate your blood and uh, uh, disinfect it uh, that uh, blade in uh, boiled water. But uh, you can use loose blood, and you can, uh, you can, you can get some stuff. There was one one time, time, one time uh, lasers. One, yeah. So it took me ten minutes uh, to to cut my hands. You passed that road from arrest and liberate to liberation. I plan to help somehow. Yes. Two political prisoners who are in Russia and also to arrested who are in ATO. That's my moral uh, responsibility because I, as nobody else I know and the situation with them. We're happy to communicate here, but uh, people somewhere in cells between uh, four walls and they yell or not yell, ask for help or not. Complaints, it doesn't matter what, uh, uh, your complaints will not receive, uh, will not reach anyone. So it's very, uh, the most important uh, to keep uh, a very high morale and uh, to hope. Thank you very much, Yuri. We will finish our briefing for today, and uh, we're very happy to see you here. Thank you. Uh, we are great. It's great that you came back and uh, success.